Hello and welcome to Stockwatch, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature, none of it should rely upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it should rely upon as any form of advice at all. It is just general in nature only. Rio Tinto has come out with a fairly stereotypical Rio Tinto result, which is pretty clean. And unlike its peer in BHP, it is all driven by two things, mainly iron ore, but also the fact that their copper division is doing pretty well. Rio reported an EBITDA of $23.9 billion for the full year. It is full year, not half year. Full year number of their overall division with an NPAC coming in at $11.8 billion. That is, like BHP, completely in line with estimates. Don't forget, these two companies are followed to the nth degree and therefore variations are out of this world if they happen. So they have come in there. Company generates an average return on equity of about 20% for the year. Overall free cash flow is at $8 billion. For Rio, that's very good. Don't forget, since the Sam Walsh era, and basically since then, they have been trying to get debt down to a much more sustainable level. They've been trying to get free cash flow moving. All divisions were in line, which is pretty impressive, including aluminium, which has been their problem child overall. Final dividend of $2.58 sorry, $2.58 is also pretty reasonable. Payout ratio is slightly higher than expected, coming in at 75%. But in the end, the thing that really matters is about outlook. And the overall outlook and output from particularly their Western Australian division at Pilbara is expected to expand even further. They are and will deliver a record this year. Last production update at 318 million megatons per annum. That is on track to go past their record of 333. They are expecting that to be maintained into the next financial year. Copper was the other thing to really highlight here. Production is now starting to really ramp up. CapEx on it is falling. And not only that, it means therefore the ex expectation for next financial year is higher in terms of the output. And that's pretty impressive considering that copper is becoming an absolute core metal, not just for Rio, but for the globe. And they've probably got into that area at the right time. The caveat, like with all these players, is that they are still having a little bit of a headache with Mongolia and the Mongolian government. They did flag that two to three weeks ago, but they did put it in this result too to show that, again, there is geopolitical risk where they operate, but their overall tier one asset that is in Oatogo is there for the taking, and they are very clearly delivering on that result. So nice numbers from Rio. However, and it is a big however, you can have these nice numbers and you can have very good outlooks and control the structures of your own business, but they are geopolitically exposed and they are globally exposed to the current conditions. And they do know that things are slowing down. They do point that out. They do expect China to continue to moderate and that the overall price of iron ore may come down. And that outlook may be just the dentner that we saw. And that probably will mean that despite the Rio result looking really positive, will the market market down for the outlook? It might. 